This guide is designed to help you to service your compressor. It applies to standard tank versions such as this, whether they are belt drive like this one or a direct drive. Um, the important thing to bear in mind is it doesn't apply to um, screw type compressors because they require a specialised service engineer to go out and deal with them. So, the first thing we need to cover is condensation. What happens in any tank, tank compressors, you get condensation build up and it builds up in the bottom of the tank. It's important to drain this regularly because otherwise what will happen eventually is that you'll form rust inside the tank and inevitably that will, in, that will involve the tank having to be replaced if it gets too bad. The way we do this is very, very simple indeed. As at the idea at the end of each day, if you've been using it, or at least once a week, there's a brass screw underneath the tank here, and literally you just open that. The important thing, the tank must be empty of air before you do it, but then you open it, allow the wastewater to, to actually run out, and when it's finished running, tighten it back up again. Very, very simple indeed. If, you haven't, if you've owned your compressor for some time and you haven't done this, what can happen is you'll open that tap and nothing will happen at all. And what's happened is there's actually a layer of rust that's built up over the hole. And the only way you're going to clear that is if you unscrew the tap completely, so you take it out and put a, a small screwdriver in and punch a hole through that rust. And that will then allow the water to come out. But be prepared, there could be quite a lot in there. Okay, so we've covered draining the con condensation. The next stage on, we're going to talk about oil. Now on this particular compressor, very, very simple indeed. There are markings on the casing, a maximum and minimum, very similar to what you get on a car. And you've also got a sight glass here, and you can see the level of oil shown in here. And that level must fall between these two lines. Very, very simple indeed. Um, the next stage on, if you need to top it up, you take out what looks like a dipstick, but it's not, it's just a plug. And with a funnel, you put a small amount of oil in at a time and build up the oil to the right level. You need to allow it time to drain so you don't overfill. Overfilling is actually worse, or as bad, I should say, as underfilling. Um, it causes pressure to build up inside the, the cylinder head and it should be avoided. So if you've gone too high, you just take out the drain plug, let some of the oil out, catch it with some tissue and what have you, and then put it back in again. Other than that, the, the other thing you need to do is if the oil looks very, very dirty, um, the ideal thing to do here is if you drain a little drop out and feel it, if it doesn't feel smooth between your fingers, then the oil has had its day and it's time to change it. As I mentioned before, you can then take out the plugs I've done now, undo this screw here, have a suitable container underneath and catch the oil. Let it drain thoroughly. What you should do is actually have the compressor hot to do this because it allows the, the oil to drain out more readily and it will clear more out of the actual pump. So once you've done that, you put your screw back in again and then carefully, a little bit at a time with a funnel, top it back up until you get back up to the correct level again. Put your bung back in and your job is done. So that's topping up the oil. The next stage on now is to look at air filters. Um, if you're working in a dusty environment, you should have your compressor mounted outside the room because dust is, is the enemy of any engine. It'll draw in, it'll get clogged up into the air filter, and I'll show you the air filter in a second. The air filter gets clogged and basically you're starving the machine of air and it can't breathe properly. That will lead to overheating, which can ev eventually end to its seizing. So, if you're working permanently in a dusty environment, put your compressor in a separate room so you don't get any problems with it. For portable compressors like this, sometimes you do end up in an area with dust around you. So it's important, particularly if you have had a particularly dusty job, when you finish, take out your filter, and it's a very simple job of blowing it out with an airline. Um, you don't have to actually have the machine isolated or drained of air for, to do this at all. Just simply a case, in this case, the, the air filter is in here, but I'll show you that now how we actually get into that area and take out the filter. Okay, so this is the air filter housing on this particular compressor. Um, they vary. Some, some compressors, they're, just, they're round and they sit on the side of the cylinder head. Um, and obviously if you've got a V-twin model, there are two air filters. But in the, in the first instance, I'll take this one off and show you what's going on inside.
So this is the air filter here. As you can see, I can pull this out. This is obviously a nice fresh new one, but they can get very, very dirty indeed. And the first thing to do is to blow them out with an airline. The important thing if you're gonna be doing that is to wear suitable protection, goggles, and obviously a face mask. Blow it out with your airline. And once that's nice and clean, you can then pop that back in just re reverse of uh, removal, pop it in there like that, and then refit it back onto your head. These vary, sometimes they're round, uh, depending on the model that you've got. They sit on the side of the cylinder head, though, whichever case, and if you've got a twin cylinder V model, there'll be one on each cylinder head. Um, the other important thing to remember is, if that filter, when you take it out, is actually hard, um, that's usually caused by paint particles. So you've, you've been spraying, very close to the compressor and it's sucked in paint particles which are still damp and what will happen then they'll build up on here and then the paint dries once you get to that situation the filter has had it you need to replace it they're readily available and very cheap just contact your local dealer and you can buy a selection at a time so you've always got some spare ones so that's changing the air filter nice and straightforward fitting obviously fitting it is just the reverse of removal and the job's done. Okay, the next job we need to do is to check the torque on the head bolts. These, you can see are six bolts here, um, and these are holding the head of the engine down. Because it gets hot, we need to retension that, make sure that they're properly tightened down on the first service. Uh, the way we do that, there's a certain sequence, and you need to look at your instructions to find out that. But in general, the, the actual torque rating that needs to be set on those is 21.5 pounds foot, or, in, as in this case, I'm gonna set them in Newton meters, so it's 29.1 Newton meters. It's a hex drive bit, so straight into the head bolt, like so, and then tighten it, and that's it. And that's done. And then I'll follow in the sequence as per the instructions. And that's tensioning and talking down the head. Okay, the next thing we need to look at when we're servicing our compressor is air leaks. And these are very simple to, to diagnose. You just simply use washing up liquid diluted with some water in a spray bottle and spray them all around this area here, underneath here, on all the joints. And what you're looking for is bubbles forming. If that's the case, in the first instance, you can just try tightening the joint a little. Just do it a little bit at a time and hopefully that will solve the problem. If it doesn't, in some areas where the main junctions are on here, you will need to then, with the air emptied from the actual tank, so completely evacuated, you'll need to then unscrew these components and put a thread locking compound in there and let it set overnight and then put everything back together again. But the important thing is that you must evacuate the air from the tank before doing that. So that's covered air leaks, nice and straightforward. Um, from there on, the next stage on, is we can look at the drive belt. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now is to make adjustments to the belt. This only applies to the belt-driven models, not the direct drive versions. Um, and the first thing you need to do is obviously isolate the machine from the main supply. From there on, we need to release the fixings, the six of them here, which just twist with a pair of pliers through 90 degrees. So I'll do one, and literally just turn it to release. So I'll quickly do the rest. Right, the next one, there's a little, little peg in the middle which keeps the, the cage held apart to protect the, uh, the pulleys. You need to pull it away from that, like so. And we can now take that cover off and what you can see now are the two pulleys. So one's the driven pulley, which is attached to the motor, and this, which is a fan one as well, is the one for the pump. And the important thing, and then is this is the, the drive belt. It's very similar to a car fan belt or, or auxiliary belt, as they're now known. And um, what we're looking at is how much deflection there is in this belt. So you pick a midpoint between the two uh, pulleys and press down and it should be 10 millimeters deflection. Any more than that, and you need to tighten it. And this one, I've loosened intentionally, as you can see, 
There's far too much movement there. The way we do this, I'll turn the machine now. We need to loosen off the four bolts that hold the motor to the chassis. So ideally use a long, um, a long spanner to reach through to the, the far ones at the back. I'll quickly do those. The front one. Right, there we are. So we can now give the, the motor a gentle shove, push it back, and that will have slackened off the belt completely. Then pull the belt out in this direction with your thumb and turn the pulley at the same time and it will come off the pulley like so. Now this is a brand new belt obviously as you can see so it's fine for putting it back on but if you find that the belt is frayed it would need to be replaced anyway so it doesn't break. So I'll now put it back in position and it's the reverse of the removal we get it Back onto the pulley here, push over this time, back towards the, the, uh, the motor and then turn the pulley again and now it's back on again. But we need to re-tension the belt because it's far too slack. And the way I like to do it, I'll turn the machine around now so you can see clearly. There we are. I use a nice stout piece of scrap timber and place it between the two, the pump and the, and the motor. Avoid the wiring, and then you can lever against the base of the pump to push. You can see there, I'll do it again, to push the motor away and retention the belt. Now, what I do then, if you're working on your own, I use a pair of self-gripping pliers and apply them to one of the bolts, like so. Let's get that round a little bit. That's better. Do that a bit tighter. That's better. Nice and tight. And now, I can now, with a ratchet spanner, one-handedly, I can tighten when I've got the tension right. So the first thing I do is apply pressure on the wood and check the play in the belt, and that is actually spot on now. And then all I've got to do then is tighten one of those fixings up like that. And now, the rest of them, I can do at my leisure. They do need to be nice and tight when you finish though. So once those are all tightened, all that remains is to replace the cage back on here. The important thing to remember is to have that spacer so it doesn't foul the two pulleys. It sits nicely in the centre there, a little bit fiddly, and then put your, your cover back on again and twist your, your, your connectors through 90 degrees to hold the cover back on again. And the job is finished. Thanks for watching and have a look at our other how to do videos for more tips.